The train goes around the track once. Pretty. Routine. But then it goes around the track again. Second time. Twice. This second time, the train sings itself to life. A hymn. Stapled to the ground with sweat and subliminal advertisements, it comes again. The same path, the same burnt smell a third time. Right. And I am riding the train. I am standing still in the conductor's booth, in the pit, where the snakes are hungry and my mouth is dry. And I watch as those tracks, all alone, repeat themselves. Uh, fifth time two. But I know that there is no end. I know that these tracks go and go on and on forever. And I think of how it would be if the snakes stopped fighting, caressing my bones with their sweet poison and their fangs, piercing my leather skin, penetrating my glass skull. But I look at the railroad, out of that rickshaw construction, and see the same blackened bir birches a sixteenth, maybe seventeenth time. I stop taking notice of the trees with their razor blades, like fines, I ignore the moon with her worrisome grin, smiling, and maybe laughing at me. I can't hear her laughing, though. I can't hear anything. I am held down and pummeled by the overbearing sound of the chugga-chugga and the choo-choo and the bitter taste of plastic on my tongue, too. It is midnight, past midnight, maybe. Maybe 4.15. There are a few stars sprinkled here and there, but the dots can't connect and the dots don't touch. Crows, vultures, swarm above my head, warning of pain and sadness and unsteadiness. But this has already happened before, and maybe, just maybe, the world ended for four minutes, and maybe claws grabbed at me and my bones shattered, just maybe. Yet the world looks better scratch taped up like this. And through this twilight sweep, I try to plunge into the world, wistfully waking like in a dream I once had. There's a woman, and her blue eye, left eye, is left, there without a care in the world, is staring. She doesn't even look familiar. Hair the color of spring, and milky white skin, akin to the moon herself. Racks, cakes, a steel door, and there's a counter behind her. A litter of beings, dry, are flowing in with one face. Their clothing is pale green, black, the occasional blue, and the elusive red. She's squawking, gurgling, strange sounds. I wonder what she's thinking. A green and white device rolls towards us, seeping haste, the gibberish. The scene looks familiar, like I've seen this before. This plays out like a burned movie reel, not even pointed at the screen. The pinstripe mechanism leaves us alone, and I look down at my hands. They are wrapped around keys. A toy train attached to keys. Habitually, instinctively, I don't know why, a tired wrist, the right one, comes punch up. The curtain brushes aside. Green letters, numbers, recognizable. This seems irrelevant now, but they say 645.